great. Well, Joelle Carter, Ava Crowder is no more. I mean, she's alive and well, but but you don't get to see her anymore. You don't get to play her anymore. What did you think about? Well, let me warn everybody watching. If you haven't seen this season of Justified, we're gonna we're gonna talk about all the secrets and everything that happened. So you might want to come back and watch this video a little later on. But what, what did you think about the finale for your character? Um, I I don't think it could have ended any better. And uh, I always have a piece of Ava with me, so she's not gone forever. But um, I don't get to I don't get to walk around as her anymore. So it is is a little bittersweet. Um, they ended her like a true Elmore Leonard woman gets to end. She kind of for herself for her own story. She gets away with it all. I don't think if you could have laid bets in in Las Vegas that the betting line would have said that all three of you you Boyd and Raylan would all make it out of this series alive. I don't think anybody expected that. There was so much back and forth um, the summer after season five discussion between um, Graham and the writers and Walton and all the cast, uh, even just within the family there, who's going to live, who's going to die. And I think almost everyone wanted to die <laughs> except for me. <laughs> and we knew they weren't going to kill Raylan pretty much because you kind of can't kill the hero. But um but I think Walton was the big question, the big question mark in the Marshalls. And um, I love that Graham went out there on a limb and said, no, I'm really thinking I want everyone to live. Well, when they were planning this season, did they ask each of you what you wanted, what your thoughts were? Um, yeah, we go into the writer's room and they kind of pitch the season and then, and then, and then you, you have discussions of uh, your dreams <laughs> and they're either crushed or they're fulfilled. <laughs> so um, you, you kind of get an idea of the lay of the land and the direction and the ultimate goal. And then, you know, because it's justified that anything could happen and it could, it kind of takes a life of its own as it starts to, sh to shoot. And so uh, things do change along the way. I've seen people who were on the death block get, get brought back to life right before shooting. So anything can happen. As long as you're not in a body bag, Graham says, you, you can come back. So you knew before the season started so pretty much where you were going to end up. Um, I had an idea. Yes. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know what was going to go on along the way uh, completely. And that was why I wasn't a hundred percent sure that it would end the way it ended. Cause there was a time in between when, Things were getting a little shaky for uh, Raylan's storyline as far as that Ava wasn't really giving enough information to be an informant that he could rely on and, and then why would he let her go at the end. And so we really had to um, cultivate the path to get to that destination. Well, there was a, that time jump four years after you took off in the car and we, you know, uh, he didn't know where you were but, but he knew you were out there somewhere. So. When when his character comes to visit your character there in uh, was it was it California I believe um, yes. what just talk about shooting that particular scene and and uh, give us give us a little tidbit here or there. Well, Graham Yost wrote that ending and um, he was there to witness it. It was very uh, uh, bittersweet. Um, I just I just tried to digest everything that Ava had gone through the last six years and 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 her actually being able to escape. And knowing that she probably hadn't really slept that well since, you know, the four years before. And that also, I feel like she knew someday she would be standing face to face with Raylan. So it was a very um, layered, packed scene to open that door and him stand there. And, um, and then she knows she has her child. So she's got to figure out a way that she's going to get him to a safe place. I don't think she thought he would let her go when she first saw Raylan. Yeah. And how great was it for you as an actress not to have to shoot a whole season in a pregnancy suit? Not <laughs> great. I'm glad I didn't have to. <laughs> we just skipped all of that and just see the sun. Exactly. Not I had my non flattering season, season five, so I didn't need a I didn't need a pregnancy suit. <laughs> Well, you don't know this as a character, but then uh, Raylan goes to see Boyd to tell him that, you know, Ava died three years earlier and, you know, no need to pursue her anymore. But do you think she's always looking over her shoulder for that Boyd's going to show up? 
Yes. I think she's always wondering if um, if he will be able to do the the unthinkable because he he proved uh, pretty convincingly that he could get away with a lot <laughs> over the last six seasons. So anything's possible. But there's some relief knowing that that Raylan and the and the law enforcement is off her tail. Yes, definitely, definitely. She's she's half safe. <laughs> what did you think just as a viewer or maybe you were around when they shot it of, of watching that, that last scene between Raylan and Boyd I got to see it I actually hung around so I could watch it it's a powerful scene and it brings the whole uh show full circle to what it began with which was which was this amazing bond this friendship, this thing that's developed in your childhood that you um, can't let go of, that knows you better than anything else. And it was so nice to see them be able to sit across from each other and uh, pretty much say everything that needs to be said and, and have all the flavor that the show represents. Um, the sentimental, the emotional, the, the funny and... Um, and it was great. I'm so glad I got to be there. Well, I think more than anything, this last season, and I told people in our forums after the previous season, I said, you know, this last season is going to be all about these three characters, this triangle that's there. Uh, but I think more than ever, we saw Ava is, is and was as good a chess player as the other two. Woohoo! Yes, I think so. People were like, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know which side she wants to be on. And I'm like, the girl's looking for opportunity. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. And she had a higher reason, not even just for herself, but also, you know, um, ha halfway through the season or whenever. I'm not sure when I was supposed to know I was pregnant, but that that she was had to get out for her child, too. And correct me if I'm wrong. I, I can't remember all the details of the season, but boy never knew that, right? No. I mean, they, they hints to it, um, I think, in the kitchen scene when he finds Raylan and me there. He wraps his arms around uh, my belly and, and, and talks about the future mm. and, and what the future holds for Ava and Boyd. And I believe in all the, the time that they spent together off screen, I'm sure they discussed, you know, their dreams of a family. And so, but he said in a take that wasn't edited in, he had an idea that maybe I was with child. Um, but I'm not sure. I don't know. That's, uh, yeah, maybe a Graham question. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of episodes before the end of the season was really the biggest plot twist, I think, of the year when you're playing both sides. You're playing Raylan, you're playing Boyd, and you take off with the money and you shoot Boyd. You don't kill him. You don't mean to kill him, I don't think. But, um, you just devastated, I mean, Ava just devastated him by doing that, right? Yes, that that was the final draw on, um, I think, the psychological journey for Boyd, although Wong could probably uh, tell you better, but I think uh, um, he was already spinning out of control, um, trying to get them out and trying to figure out uh, his ending. Um, and one thing that I think helped Boyd move forward was the idea that he had this love this this love story as unconventional as it was um it was their love story and uh i i think that moment was very very hard for ava too she did what she had to do i don't think she ever wanted to hurt boyd in that way but um that was her way out and i commend her for being that strong and for realizing that these two men um were kind of obsessed about each other and we're not going to let go of uh, outdoing one another in the um, expense of even Ava. Well, I don't, I'm sure you're aware of this, but uh, we work with all the different networks on our Emmy stuff and, and uh, they're moving you from supporting to lead this year uh, on the Emmy ballot. And so you might be nominated against a lot of those ladies that you probably watch on a regular basis. If so, do you know, you know, you, if, if you get nominated in July, you'd have to pick an episode. Do you know which one you would choose? Which one would you choose? Well, you had so much good stuff this year, and I do help a lot of people pick there. So if this happens in July, please, you know, get in touch, and I'll be glad to help you. But 
the really there's three things you're looking for when you submit an Emmy episode. One is screen time. You want an episode where you're in it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, secondly is impact. You want something that just you know wows the judges. That 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 a big impact moment or maybe a whole impact episode. And then third, you want range. You want something where you're dramatic and comedic and you know you're doing a wide variety of things. So is it, when I say all of that, does something ring a bell with you for the season? Yeah, uh, for me, I would like to edit a nice bunch of clips together <laughs> <laughs> because exactly what you said, you want to you want to show it all, and you don't want them to just think it's a one note character because she definitely was not. Um, but I do I do tend to uh, kind of cling to the uh, the drunk episode um, because you can see a lot of different uh, flavors of Ava: uh, the dramatic, the funny, the um, the charismatic and the everything about her. Um, but I love the scene, the episode where boy takes me to the, to the cabin to, I'm actually trying to decide now, uh, with my publicist, what we're going to, what we're going to use. So, okay. Yeah. I think now that you're talking about it, I do think the drunk scene, another great thing about that one is that's where you really find out as an audience that she's playing Raylan as much as, you know, as much as he kind of suspects. Yeah. I mean, if, if no one had seen the show, you could probably get an idea of what's going on just by that one episode. Well, that's key in Emmy voting because you can't rely on the fact that people on your jury, you know, there's maybe 75 to 100 actors that'll be on your jury that they, that they watch the show regularly. You have to give them something that where they can kind of catch on quickly. I agree. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question back to the previous season because I felt for you I, I do this on any show a long-running show at some point they take a character and they dump them off into some side storyline where they don't get to interact with the other cast anymore and they did that to you with the prison stuff the previous season did you like that season or were you just anxious to get back to the normal uh, cast member interactions I have a lot of feelings about that season. I think it was a very important season for Ava's growth and for them to get her to the place where she could actually make that deal with Raylan to be his um, snitch and to actually do that to Boyd. Um, if she didn't have that season, I, I don't think I would have been as strong in season six. Um, it, was, it was isolating and it was hard to be away from the rest of the cast. And it was a very heavy season dramatically for Ava. So in the, um, in, in the way that we always just tried to incorporate humor into our, our very wonderful show, um, uh, it was hard. It was a hard season to do that too. Um, but in the growth process of a character, I, it was very, very valuable and I'm glad, I'm so glad that we had it. And it took her to rock bottom and you got to see once again, how this character reinvented herself and, um, comes out a completely different person so that she could do what she did in, um, season six so that she could play both sides and, um, decide to make a decision for herself. You needed that bridge to get to where you got in season six. Yes. That when you said that about that isolation, it reminded me of when on Lost. I think I read um, one of the actresses saw one of the other actresses like at an event and said, "How is your show going?" Uh, because they never <laughs> saw each other; they were all off in different worlds. Well, I felt that way in like season one, part of season two, because they kept Ava in Raylan's hotel room. At some point, I was like, "Can I get out of this hotel room and have a scene with someone else on the show, please?" <laughs> Not that I don't love Raylan and Tim, but yeah, you want a little diversity. You want to be connected to to your your castmates. Well, we talked about this triangle. Just as an actress, tell me about. Let's start with uh, with Walton. Tell me about working with Walton. Walton's wonderful. He's what you want on the set when you're um, when you're, when you're waking up at four a.m. and um, you have a heavy heavy day. Um, he always comes energized. He comes uh, enthusiastic. He comes with his ideas. He's He's prepared, and you have to stand across from him and be ready to catch what he's going to throw. Um, and he's very generous, um, and he's a lot of fun to shoot with. He's he's a he's definitely a um, an actor's actor. It's, it was a great experience. You, you 
he has a lot of ideas for the show too, and he contributed a lot for his not only his character but the show. And Timothy, you know, I talked to Jonathan Tucker last week, who only had what five episodes, so he didn't have near as much experience. But he said he was a little surprised that he'd be doing this complicated Elmore Leonard type dialogue, and on the other end of the you know the camera, Timothy would be making faces at him. So um, you know, like like mocking him for for having such trouble getting all the words out. So you tell us, is, is that is that your experience with Timothy, or, or different? Yeah, Timothy's always having a good time. So that's, <laughs> and I think that helps bring that lightness and ease into the character of Raylan. Um, um, he's very, very, very generous with uh, dialogue, with anything you need. And, um, and he likes for it to, to go and to go fast. Uh, so um, two very different ways of working, but both were, were very enjoyable. Did you ever have trouble with the dialogue? Did, was it difficult for you? Um, no, I really didn't have that much trouble with it. Um, the thing, the difference, I guess, is that Tim was always willing to run. He'd run it a thousand times, and um, so that you know, we'd get the pace and we'd get it out. And I think most of my heavy, heavy dialogue scenes were with Tim. So um, I did have. A lot of stuff with Walton, but when 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 you with when you here with Boyd, it tends to be he's he's doing most of the talking. Well, that's true. <laughs> that character, yeah, very flowerful. I remember um, was it Michael O'Malley saying something about you know never met I don't remember the exact word, but never met a word he didn't like or a sentence he didn't like or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. He loved uh, the, now talking about uh, guest actors, all these six years, just tons of great people came in for an episode or a whole season or whatever. Was there one that just really stood out for you uh, working opposite? Uh, I loved working with Zachariah, Uncle Zachariah, Jeff Fahey this season. Um, really uh, talk about giving. He, he was a very generous, very generous, um, wonderful actor. Uh, and I loved him as my uncle. Uh, uh, um, Mark, um, Sam Elliott. Wow. Uh, that I was heard weeks ago. I was reading some article maybe around the first or second week. And one of the, uh, uh, maybe it was Graham talking to somebody else online and just said, uh, that you maybe you and Walton both came in and said, we want, we want some scenes with more scenes with Sam. This is fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And the finale, too, when he pulls me close in that chair, it was so scary. And he came up with all that. Um, we were in good hands with our with our casting, I tell you what. I mean, I didn't shoot a lot of stuff with Margot, but I was around Margot Martindale. Uh, I, you know, I actually got to shoot one scene with Nally Z. I know she wasn't a guest, but <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking of all the wonderful. Yeah, I, could, I don't know if there's a favorite i just really loved uh damon who played dewey might be one of my favorites yeah yeah graham said uh i think last week after the show was over he was doing kind of a, an exit interview with somebody and said that was the hardest character he had to to, to kill off he just really didn't want to do that yeah i think everyone was sad everyone cried a tear for dewey oh and they, he was so fun to write for and he played it so well that they just he gave them fuel for you know more and more of Dewey. Uh, Abby Miller, who played um, uh, my my whore in season four. Oh my God, uh, I can't remember the character's name right now. Um, yeah, I, I know it. I know who you're talking about, and, and the name's not coming to my mind either. Yeah, but so many, so many uh, lovely, lovely character actors. Well, you've already seen, as we wrap up here, you know, we do a lot of award stuff, you know, Margot won and Jeremy Davies won and a lot of people have been nominated on the show. And, and uh, I really hope this final season gets recognized. I think you all, all just did an amazing job pulling this, pulling this kind of a thing off. Oh, thank you. I agree. Her name's Ellen May. Anyways, yeah, that's right. I agree. Um, I, I really, I just, stand by this season so much and, and not for myself, but just for all the amazing work um, with our lead characters and, and our guests. And um, I'm proud. I'm proud to be Ava Crowder from Justified. <laughs> well, what's next? What, what are you going to do now? 
I don't know. I'm going on vacation for a month in Europe, and then when I get back, I'm gonna hit it hard. We're gonna get some some new uh, projects going. Well, thank you so much for six great years. I hope this works out on some award stuff this summer, and um, and good luck with everything. Have a great vacation. Thank you. It was so nice to do this with you.